You Ignored Us, a story by user The Real Federal. High Professor Mipfilian's face tendrils quivered in shock when the purple emergency comm squealed. Her hand shook as she picked up the receiver on the device that hadn't been used during her entire tenure at the university. Hello? Yes, I understand. I will arrive at the council chamber as quickly as possible. She sighed as she dropped the receiver back into its dusty cradle, and her shoulders drooped. There was only one reason she would be summoned before the Galactic Council. We warned them, she said to herself as she collected some printouts and data chips. Me and every one of us for the past 150,000 years, and none of them listened. But now it's too late. It's all going to fall to dust. She exited her office, closing the door behind her. She ran her forelimb tentacles over the gold lettering on her door, for what she expected to be the last time. Behind her, as she walked down the hallway, the words High Professor Mephilian, Senior Researcher, Human Studies, gleamed in the light. A tree of Noxorian soldiers escorted Mephilian into the council chamber, which was in utter chaos. Representatives from 54 races were screeching, growling, keening, and generally arguing across the entirety of the chamber. The rhythmic pounding of the Prime Minister smashing a gavel against his podium, yelling order, 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 and being utterly ignored added a level of surreal to the whole situation. Mephilian's outer membrane turned from mauve to gray as she watched the representative from the combined Aviac roosts rocking back and forth in the corner, plucking quills from his wings one at a time, before stuffing them in his mouth. A wave of silence slowly spread through the chamber as they saw Professor Mephilian standing in the doorway. The Prime Minister, taking advantage of the pause, banged his gavel one more time. My esteemed colleagues, please, please take your seats, and let us hear from the foremost expert in the situation. Perhaps she can add some important data to calm everyone's concerns. Please take your seats. Order began to take hold as the Prime Minister motioned with his massive arm, from a fill-in to join him at the podium. With the slow steps of the condemned, she walked down the main aisle, and up the stairs to the rostrum. As the various representatives slowly took their seats, the Prime Minister spoke. The one being most knowledgeable in this field... The one being most knowledgeable in this field, I am hoping that you can give us some sort of reassurance that this situation is not as catastrophic as the members of this esteemed council fear it is. Spearing the Prime Minister with a glare of contempt, she jammed her data chip into the podium's projector, and said out loud, No, Prime Minister, it is not as bad as the council believes. It is far, far worse. Her tentacles manipulated the projector controls as images filled the chamber. Myself and my fellow experts on humans have been warning you since the end of the last great war that this would happen. We urged, pleaded, and begged your predecessors to rescind the restriction on genocide and just exterminate the last humans, but all were refused. The war almost ended in the defeat and enslavement of all our combined races, but still no one listened. Her tentacles danced over the keys as she brought up an image of a blue and green planet, focusing on various areas as samples of fauna appeared. Instead, to keep their precious consciences clear, they found a world, a Class L death world, the only one we know of in the galaxy, and dumped the mind-wiped survivors of humanity on it, hoping that the planet would accomplish what they lacked the courage to do. Lashed by solar radiation, ultraviolet rays, gravity nearly twice what the humans were used to, and full of predators out of a species' worst nightmares, they set up an interdiction zone a hundred light years around it, and expected nature to take its course. We were wrong. My predecessors have been pleading with this council for the past 150,000 years to just send a fleet and sterilize the entire surface of the planet, but have been ignored over and over. Then, when electromagnetic signals were detected coming from that death world, my mentor implored you to destroy the humans, as they had obviously achieved a terrifying level of technology in such a short period of time. Yet you ignored him. Many years later, when you were considering sending a probe to evaluate the situation, Again, my mentor implored you not to take the risk of allowing the probe to fall into the human's hands, and again, he was ignored. When the probe mysteriously stopped transmitting, you put it down to a malfunction. You were wrong. They obviously captured it and copied its technology. The murmuring started amongst the council as each fact struck home. The display changed again and showed the area of the galaxy around the death world. The Philian gestured at the numerous points of light. In forbidding any colonies or settlements in that area, we have left hundreds of systems for them to colonize. And according to the second probe that was sent, they have already spread to over a hundred worlds. Most of the worlds they have colonized we would think of as uninhabitable, yet they seem to be thriving and that is because of us. They are now larger than their empire was at the start of the Great War. She gestured once more as a large-headed, frail-framed, four-limbed creature appeared. These are the humans that nearly defeated us all, millennia ago. They were weak of body, but clever, cunning 
and most of all adaptable. The image changed to show a hairy, broad-shouldered figure. The massive muscles of a heavy worlder, coupled with the obvious malevolent intelligence in its eyes, terrified all who saw it. This is what we turned them into. There was a momentary yelp of fear from the representative of the Canid Packworlds, who then spoke. How? How did they survive? I've seen the information on that world. They should have all been consumed by the predators even if they survived the gravity and radiation. How did they kill them all off before they were killed themselves? Mipfilian tapped several keys and a new set of images appeared. Most of these were taken from the human transmissions, and it should answer your question. A furry fanged creature supporting hooked claws appeared. This is a creature humans classify as feline. They're wild, solitary, vicious predators. This is what the humans turned them into. The scene shifted to a human dangling a piece of string. As a smaller version of the feline, claws and teeth still very much in evidence, batted at the dangling end playfully. Again, the scene changed. It showed a group of lean, furred creatures with tooth-filled maws, dragging down a horned creature many times their size. This creature is classified by the humans as canine, an intelligent pack hunter with jaws capable of crushing bones. They were changed into this. The scene changed to show a small, flat-faced creature bearing little resemblance to the previous image. The animal was wearing a torso covering and a conical hat, as the humans sang a song to it. The scene changed to a creature more resembling the original, running after a long piece of plant matter that was flung by a human. The predator obediently returned the branch to the human, and rolled onto its back as the human scratched the creature's belly. The professor looked at the assembled representatives, and pointed an accusatory tentacle at them. You were warned, but you ignored us. You had 150,000 years of opportunities, and you threw them away. You could have listened to the experts, left them alone, and they might have killed themselves off. But in your arrogance, you gave them all they needed to take the galaxy. But at least I will be spared of that indignity. She took the auto-injector from her pocket and jabbed it into her neck. She slumped against the podium and took a last look at the council. Enjoy learning how to fetch sticks. She gasped out before tumbling to the ground. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you're new here, welcome aboard. Check out the description for the story and join the Discord if you like. Consider supporting the channel and the author as well. It's a dangerous world out there, but remember to be brave and look up to seek the stars.